Hello South Fork family and anyone else that's tuning into this video. I hope that you are doing well and all those that you love are well also. Uh, we want to just take a little bit of time this morning. We're, we're not able to gather still with all that's going on in our community and in our country, uh, but we, we realize that we can still come before God. We can still seek Him and uh, we can do that through scripture. We can do that through our meditations together. And, and so we wanna take time for that today that uh, we can't be together as one body to worship, but we can still worship wherever we are because God is worth worshiping and he is worthy of all the worship we can offer. And this is a special Sunday, it's Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday where we celebrate Jesus's entry into Jerusalem. And so with that, we're going to take some time to, to read that story out of Matthew. It comes from Matthew chapter 21. We're gonna be reading verses one through 11. and then. I I just have just a, a few reflections that I want to share with you and uh, leave with you for today. So we're going to keep this pretty simple. I, I think that uh, one of the great things that this story reminds me is just how how simple the, the process of faith is. We, we try to make it complicated. We try to add all these extra steps, but really and truly it's about uh, listening to God's voice and then following through with what God has said. So uh, with that, let's take some time today and, and read the scripture. We'll pray together and then uh, I'll discuss those things. So Coming from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to me anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of, them, of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, What is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. God, I do thank you that you enter in victoriously. Lord, you don't enter in uh, for the pomp and circumstance, but you enter in into our hearts and, and you long to meet with us uh, even more than we long to meet with you. And so, God, I pray uh, wherever your people are gathered this day, in homes, in uh, living rooms, in, in bedrooms, wherever they are, God, I pray uh, that you will enter in with them and you will surround them with your presence. You will give them strength. Uh, and God, that they would know that you are the rightful king. You are the king of glory. And so, Lord, we pray that you would guide us and lead us in your word today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I wanted to come out here to the, the dirt road that's right beside our house. I, I think that we, we, we get this picture of, of Jerusalem, and really it, it was a big city, but compared to the other places in that time, it was, it, it was a backwater city. It, it wasn't the, uh, the Rome. It wasn't a place in Greece. It wasn't uh, somewhere in Egypt. It was just an average city, and uh, we, we make it out to be this great thing, and it, was, it is a great thing. Uh, but I, I just think that this is such a season where God is inviting us to see the, the simple things. Uh, Jesus doesn't come in in some glorious way. He comes in riding on a colt in a humble way. And, and this is such a, a time where we can pay attention to that. We can seek God in humble ways. We can listen to God above all the other noise that's out there. I, I just uh, standing out here, I hear all the birds that are, that are around, and I'm sure you were able to hear them as well in the video. Uh, but... Jesus doesn't always break in in these great and glorious ways. Everybody's story is not a, a Paul-Saul story where, where God comes in with a blinding light and, and reveals his glory. I think that sometimes we, we need to learn to seek God in the middle of, of those small ways. And so Jesus, as he's coming into Jerusalem, it wasn't a showy way. It, it wasn't him showing off his power. It was uh, quite the opposite. He, he came in as a king, uh, but it wasn't in this grand way. And so what I think that this 
story invites us to pay attention to is that his disciples, and, and that's what each of us, I hope, are, are uh, desiring to be as his disciples. His disciples, they, they recognize that he is the king. You see those two disciples that he sends in ahead of everyone else to, to get the colt, to get the donkey, uh, to bring it back out and to, to prepare it for Jesus. And, and there's just this great story of, of trust that because Jesus said it's going to be there, they go. They trust him and they obey. They, they move forward because Jesus said for them to move forward because they recognize who he is. Uh, that, that's just one of my challenges for you today is just do you recognize who Jesus is? In the season that you're in in life right now, do you recognize who Jesus is? That He's still the king. He's still the one that sits on the throne and, and that is over all things that are happening, that uh, this has not taken him by surprise, that your circumstances have not taken him by surprise. And we realize there's a lot going on. I think, if anything, the season ha has revealed to us how fragile we really are as human beings, how quickly everything that we hold to, dear, to be dear to us can, can be shifted and changed and, and taken away. And so these disciples, as they recognize who Jesus is, uh, they are able to go and be faithful. And, and in that faithfulness, you see this pattern take place. They, they trust him, they obey him, and then they honor and celebrate him. And so this is, this is just a process I want you to think about in this. As, as these disciples are going through this story alongside Jesus, they trust him. They, they move forward. They obey him. They do what he said that they're called to do. And, and out of that, they, they honor him. They take their cloaks. They take what they have, and, and they offer it to him. They go and they cut the limbs, and, and they celebrate him. That was a symbol of victory that, that they realized that Jesus was victorious. I think that we miss out on that point as believers so often that Jesus is already victorious. He already has the victory, and because he has the victory, we also are victorious. Now, we, we realize that uh, even if we have victory over sin and death, uh, that we still will experience the, the effects of a fallen world, but we still trust, we still obey, and we still honor. We, we follow what Jesus is saying to do. We keep searching this word. We keep searching for his spirit's presence and, and listening so that we can, we can learn to listen for that voice that we might trust, we might obey, we might honor. And then in the end, you see that group of people gathered together celebrating. I, I just, I don't know how, how to express how much I'm looking forward to being together again with the body of Christ, to be able to celebrate. That's something that's been taken away from us in, in so many ways right now, but it, it just makes me hunger for that opportunity to be together again, to, to worship God, to, to sing at the top of our lungs, because Jesus deserves our, our greatest uh, efforts in our, in our songs and in our voices. Uh, and so my challenge to you, I just want you to think for yourself. In, in this season that you're in, as you are facing these times, as you're facing uh, each moment, keep looking to Jesus. Trust him. Trust his voice, that, that his voice is good. It, and, and I realize that there's bad news that's coming along, and it's so easy to just listen to the bad news, but trust his voice, that he is calling you forward. Obey what he is saying for you to do. And then honor him by, by that obedience, by do, going the extra step, by, by showing him that you love him, that you're not going to only go halfway because this, it's hard to be faithful right now. But God, you're worth giving my best right now because you are worthy. So I, I just want to leave you with that idea that you would take this time, take this season that we're in, and, and realize that God is working in it in a special way in a way that he probably wouldn't if, if we had have just kept going on with life as usual. Things have changed so dram dramatically over the past few weeks that I, I believe that God is able to speak to us in a way that he, he wouldn't uh, normally, or even more so, that we wouldn't be able to hear because we would be running around doing all the things. And I realize some of you out there, you're, uh, you're busy right now because you're, you're adjusting and figuring out, I understand that I'm learning how to work YouTube and all these online opportunities. There's so many things that are calling for our attention, so many emails that are talking about what's going on, so many newscasts, everyone's talking about uh, what's happening. But I, I wanna challenge you to take time to listen to the one voice that really matters in this season. Listen to the voice that's saying to do the simple thing. Uh, it, it may be to just go to your neighbor uh, and, and keep your social distancing. I realize that. Go to your neighbor and just see how they're doing. Or, or maybe not even going that far. Giving them a call and checking on them to see how they are. This is a season where if we will be obedient in those small things, trust God how he's calling us in this season, I think that we're going to come out of this season on the other side celebrating because we're going to see God do great things that uh, we wouldn't uh, because we weren't necessarily listening in the other, other times. 
So we do want to take some time just to pray uh, for, for our community, for uh, all those around us. I, I've been asking for prayer requests, and, and the one that I got this week was uh, from Donna Moon. She said, uh, let's pray for all of the ones on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, she asked also to pray for our pastors and our churches, the government, the sick, the ones facing surgery, ones recovering from surgery, and everyone else in the world. And I agree with her that each and every one of us needs prayer right now. We all need that prayer. And so maybe maybe your trust and obedience right now is just to have someone on your heart in the morning and just pray for them throughout the day. Uh, you may not know what it, what it is that laid that person on your heart, but uh, God has it there for a reason. And so I wanna just challenge you to trust and obey in that. So with that, let's take a moment, let's close our time in prayer. And uh, I just look forward to being able to, to share the devotions with you throughout the week. I, I hope that they encourage you and invite you to walk with God a little bit closer each day and that when we get to finally get together, we celebrate God uh, with, with just upraised voices and hearts that are full of his presence. So let's take time to pray. God, we do trust in your goodness. We trust that right now you are doing something uh, and Lord, just like these two disciples, it might not have made sense to them in the moment to go and to uh, request this donkey from, from these owners. Uh, but God, you are inviting us to listen to you and follow through in this season in a special way. God, I pray for your people. Uh, the people who, who just hear that call of need around us, uh, doctors and nurses and EMS workers and firefighters and policemen who run towards danger. And Lord, we realize in, uh, right now there's a different level of danger that uh, they face. And so we pray for your protection over them. We pray for your comfort and peace to be around them. There's so much that's happening and this uh, pandemic continues to spread and it can tempt us to despair. But God, I, I pray that you would strengthen their hearts, that as they serve, they, they grow in confidence of what they can do to, to help better care for others. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that are sick, not just from uh, this virus, but uh, in all ways, whether it is cancer, whether it is uh, just a sickness of the heart that they are, are in, a, in a season that is difficult. I pray that you will come around each person that is hearing this video right now, that you will give them strength to be faithful, that you will invite them to a place where they celebrate you, uh, even in spite of what they're going through. Uh, God, we we realize that you come into humble places. And so we pray that our hearts would be those humble places for you to come and meet with us right now, that we would celebrate who you are because you are worthy to be celebrated. Lord, we entrust all things into you because you are the rightful King of glory. You are the one that entered triumphantly on Sunday and, and we realize that you were placed on the cross on Friday. Uh, and that did not take you off the throne of heaven, but it is where you were lifted up for all men to look into and to find salvation. And so I pray, God, for all people that hear this video, that wherever they are, they hear your voice inviting them to step towards you, to know that you are with them, that you have not abandoned them, but you are doing a great thing in them right now. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you for all this, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. South Fork is so good to just have a moment to talk with you. I, I really do look forward to being able to see you face to face again and to uh, just discuss some of these things uh, personally that's been going on. Uh, but until then, I just want you to know, like I said every other week, that I love you and I do look forward to being able to see you again. Take care.